Welcome to this tutorial which is just looking at how to create a counter. Now this counter is not actually per second although you can adjust it accordingly but if I just do a quick playthrough of what we got you'll see that every time it counts up from one, two, three, rather than just stopping or having an easy ease as it gets into the next place it actually bounces to a stop. And so we're going to create this timer that moves around and we're also going to add the expressions that help it to be able to bounce and this is actually very easy to do. I'm going to hit the zero key on my numpad just to do the RAM preview for you. And you'll see that as each one comes up it bounces in place. Now we can change the amount it bounces, we can change the way it works and we're going to create the whole thing from scratch. This is what we're going to work on. Okay, so you'll see in my composition if I just move this up that I've actually got all these different layers. Now I've got a camera which we'll look at in a second, I've got a black solid which I'll explain a bit later on and I've got a rotation controller which is actually a null layer which is controlling the rotation for the whole item. And then these are my different layers. Now if I select my camera layer and hit the C key on my keyboard I get the camera tool and if I hit the left mouse button I can actually rotate around and you'll see, I'm going to hit the tilde key so that you can see the whole thing, you'll see that I've actually got the whole thing set up with a black solid in the middle, well it's the same colour as my background so that you can't see what's going on at the back without that layer. If I take that black layer off and I'm just going to make this fit, if I take the black layer off you'll see that you can actually see the background, so the black layer is simply just to make sure that the back can't be seen. Now, I have created this out of a series of compositions. The reason that I haven't used the same composition each time is that if you create one composition and then duplicate it all the way around, if you want to change the text inside the composition, as you'll see we've got a 0 and then a 1 all the way through to 9, if you've got one composition and you change the text, all of those compositions will be changed. So I'm going to show you how to do it with both because sometimes you want something that can look like this that hasn't got a variable text or you're running a film on it so that as it spins round you get a posterized film look to it so it can be one composition. Alternatively you want to have multiple compositions that we need to be able to place inside our composition. So let's just have a quick look at how to do each one of those. I'm going to create a new composition and I'm going to call this counter2 and we're going to go with the HDV or HDTV 720 and we're going to make it 15 seconds long. So if you just highlight that, do 1-5 and then point and enter on your number pad, it'll already be 15 seconds long. Now, inside of this we need to create our shape layer or whatever we're going to use. So I'm going to go to my shape tools and I'm going to hold the little drop down and choose the rounded rectangle tool. And you can see I've got a fill in a stroke here, which I don't particularly like. I'm going to change the red to something a lot more usable. Perhaps something over there. That's not bad. Click OK. And I've got a white stroke. That's probably going to be OK. Maybe make it just a little bit bigger, say 4 pixels. Then I can click and drag and create whatever I want to create. Now, whilst holding the left mouse button before I let go, I'm going to hold my space bar and I can drag that into place wherever I want it to be and I don't think the stroke is big enough so I'm just going to quickly go up here to where it says 4 and just drag it out to 20 say 21 so we can get a better look at how it feels right so that's going to be my background layer now as I was saying before if you add text on this and this is your basic composition then if you duplicate it you can't make the text add up unless you have animated the text somehow in your timeline so let me just show you the basics of that. I'm going to go to text tool, I'm going to click in here and I'm just going to type zero and I don't like the font or the color, just double click to select that, change it to probably a gray, dark gray, that's fine and I want to change my font so I just click in here and I can go up and down with my arrow keys 
until I find something that I'm quite happy with. I think that'll do. And might change the font size. I'm going to select my selection tool, or V is the keyboard shortcut to select it and move it into place. So there is my element, if you like, that I'm going to be used, that I'm going to duplicate all the way through. So I can then select both of those layers. And I can, if I'm in CS5 and above, I'm in CS6, I believe, you can right-click on those and you can go to Precompose. If you're in an earlier version, then you'll go to Layer, Precompose, or Control shift or Command shift c And it asks you, do you want to precompose them? Yes, we do. I'm actually going to call this Layer 0, so that we know what it is, and click OK. So there is our item that we're going to want to move in 3D space. Now, I want to be able to look at it. Um, I can do that with two views, or I can do it just by creating camera. I'm actually just going to create a camera to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to go to Layer New Camera, or Command Control Shift C, or Command Option Shift C. Create a camera. I'm going to go with 50 mil. That's fine. OK. At the moment, it's saying, hang on a second, you haven't got any 3D layers. That's fine. Click OK, and just change this Layer 0 to a 3D layer. Select the camera. Again, hit C to get the Unified Camera Tool, and there is our item in 3D space, ready to animate. Now, I want it to rotate around. So if I want it to rotate around, what I actually want to do is move the anchor point for the layer backwards. So I'm going to select the layer and hit A for anchor point. And then I'm going to hit V on my keyboard to get my selection tool. And I'm going to start moving the anchor point in 3D space so that it is behind the layer. So we're moving it back here. In actual fact, the figure I think I'm probably going to want to end up with is something like 1,000. Well, let's start with, say, 500 to start off with. OK, and if I go back to C, camera tool, you can see that's it from the side on. And if I now rotate that layer, R for rotation, and I was to rotate it around the X axis, which is the red line here, if you see. So it's going to rotate around the red line. And I start to rotate it you'll see that it's rotating away from its anchor point, which is how we're going to create all our multiple layers. OK, so what we've done is we've created our layer, we've moved the anchor point back in 3D space. Now, say I want to create a whole bunch of layers which are the same. In the previous example, I created, as you can see, all these different compositions from 0 all the way through to 9, um, which are separate compositions so that I can have a separate text layer on each one of them. But if I'm going to, rather than having the text, if I just double click layer 0, rather than just having text, I had a video layer, or I had animated text, or whatever, then I could simply get away with duplicating the layer. Now, if you select the layer, and you duplicate it, and you open up its R for rotation, you actually want it to move round a certain amount. Now, if you want to do 10 layers, all you could simply think of is, well, I need 10 layers, so that is 360 divided by 10. Therefore, I want to rotate it by 36 degrees. Fairly easy maths. But what if it is, say, 6 layers or 8 layers, and you're not really sure of your maths? Well, you could dive for your calculator. Or alternatively, you could simply go to X rotation, and you can go to 360 divided by however many layers it is. So say it was 6, enter, and you can see that it's 60 degrees. Say it was 7, we could go 360 divided by 7, enter, and then it's 51.4, which is actually a harder sum. So you can actually go in and type something in, or alternatively, you could use the math function inside After Effects to simply and easily do it for you. However, there is another way, particularly if you're going to be duplicating the layer, which can make it even easier for you as you duplicate. And that's if we add a simple expression. And the simple expression is this. If you hold the Alt key and click on the stopwatch next to X rotation, we can take the pick whip and say, look at the previous layer's rotation, X rotation, let go. And we can say plus or minus, whichever you want to work at, 36 degrees because we know that it's going to go around 36 degrees, because we're going to do 10 layers. So we can simply do that, but it's always going to be looking at layer 2. So if I duplicate it, all my next layers will be at 36 degrees from this first layer. However, there is a better way of doing it. Where it says this little option here, speech marks, layer 2, 
just type index plus one. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the word index is actually a reserved word in After Effects, and it refers to the layer number here. So the index number two or three. Okay, so what we're saying is in this composition there is a layer which index number is this layer, which is ever number we're looking here, we're looking at two, plus one, three. Look at its transforms rotation and add 36 degrees. Or you could do 360 divided by 10, or whatever you wanted at this point. So what I've said to this layer is, if you want to know where you should or how far you should be rotated, I want you to look at the layer which is index your own number plus one, which would be the layer below it, Look at its transform rotation and add 36. So I'm going to put enter on my keyboard. So you can see it's placed it 36 degrees rotated. Now if I take layer 0 and I duplicate it again, control D, and I'm just going to pull out with my camera actually so you can see a little bit more. So you can actually see what we're going to be doing here. And I continue to duplicate it. Control D, 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 D. So there I've got 10 layers, all of them duplicated around this item. All of them share the same properties, as in their anchor points are all at the same place. And all I've needed to do is duplicate it by using that simple expression, which is very simple. However, I might then want to go in and change the layer names. They're all layer zero at the moment. Um, maybe if I'd have called them something else, it would have duplicated properly. But anyway, they've all got the layer names. Now, however, they're all overlapping slightly, which isn't exactly what we want. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can see a little bit more. So what we want them to do is sit out a little bit. Simple way of doing that is simply to select all these layers. So shift select from one to the bottom. And then hit A for anchor point and then start to move the anchor point out for any of these layers. And as they're all selected, they're all going to move out in a uniformed way until you get the exact look that you're looking for. Now do bear in mind that there are different ways of moving the anchor point. So I'm moving Z, so I'm pulling them away from here. But if I was to move, say, Y, I could actually create a completely different look for how this item is going to move. So if you do this, do have a little play and see the different ways that you can actually move all these things around. I'm just going to right click and hit reset. That was the word anchor point by the way, not one of these individual bits. And then I can again pull out Z until I get the end result that I'm looking for, which is something like that. Okay, so those are all now ready to rotate, but I don't particularly want to continuously go in and select all these layers to make them rotate. So I'm just going to scroll them all up, click away, and I'm going to create a null layer which is going to be my controller for controlling the rotation of these items. So we go layer new null object or control alt shift y or command option shift y for a new null object. Immediately we need to make it a 3D object so it fits into our scene. And we need to make sure that its position is absolutely the same as our layers. So if we just use any one layer and hit P for position, select P for position and copy, select our null layer, hit P for position, and paste. We know that it is definitely in the right place just in case we've moved the layers around. Now it's a simple case of taking our 10 layers or however many layers you've got. Again I'm going to shift select them all and I'm going to parent them to this null object. So I take the pick whip and take it to the null object and I'm going to just let go. Standard parenting. So now the null object is going to control the rotation or the position or any of the other items of all these layers. So if I wanted to, I could shy them all and not even have them in my timeline if I wanted just to get rid of seeing them and just use my control point. Now here's my null object. I'm going to rename it layer control. And I'm just going to move my camera around so we can see things a little bit better. You'll see that they're all zero because they're all the same composition. If you wanted to have the text just adding up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You would need to create separate compositions for those. But now, if I select my layer control, hit R for rotation and start to rotate Y rotation, 
you'll see that the whole thing's going to rotate very easily. And if we also look at the other rotations, we've got Y rotation and we've got Z rotation, which can give us some very interesting animation options as we bring these things in. I reset, reset. I'm actually going to take my camera and just open that and also click reset. So we're looking at the beginning here and this is the item moving around and we've got our rotation here for Y rotation. But as you can see, we can still see the background there. So the simple way of getting rid of the background was to create a new layer, so layer new solid, and just make sure that the color is exactly the same as your background. Click OK. Then make sure that layer is 3D. And already you'll see, if I just select my camera again and move it around, you can see that it's pretty much gone straight into the right place so that we don't have a problem with how the whole thing looks. And if we want to scale it up or down, we can do. So that's how we can create all those bits and pieces. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate these. I'm actually going to use 1 to 9. And then I'm going to look at adding the expression so that they can bounce on in place. And you can control that expression really easily. Because believe it or not, it's a tool or an expression that ships with After Effects and will be in the project file that I upload with the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial. My name's Andrew Davis. Bye for now.